chapter 6, Word Order with the Perfect Tense. Today we are going to look to find out how we arrange the different parts, the have and the past participle in a sentence with the perfect tense. I gave you an English example. We have learned German, right? Oops. <laughs> <laughs> My pen is a problem. Now let's see how we say it in German. Wir haben, so far so good, right? Deutsch, you know that word. And now what do you think is going to happen? The past participle is the last part of the sentence. Gelernt. Wir haben Deutsch gelernt. So the learned goes all the way to the end. It's not complicated, it's just different and you have to try to remember. That's the hardest thing. All right. Now, this is a regular sentence, right? Subject, verb, wir, verb is a conjugated haben, past participle to the end of the sentence. No matter how long the sentence is, always at the end. Now, we also learned subordinating conjunctions, and we learned that in a, when a subordinating conjunction is used like weil or das or obwohl, that the conjugated verb goes to the end. So let's see what happens here. I gave you the original sentence, er hat viel studiert, okay? It's one of the ihren verbs, that's why it's, has no, it has no GE prefix. He has studied a lot. Now let's add a weil. He was tired because he has studied a lot. Weil er viel studiert hat. Remember, haben is the conjugated verb. So that goes to the end of the sentence. Weil er viel studiert hat. Conjugated verb to the end. Nothing has changed. It's, a, it's just that we have a past participle to deal with now too. Let's look at the next one. Sie hat in der Disco getanzt. She has danced in the disco. She said that she danced in the disco. All right, so verb comes in the regular place. Does sie in der Disco getanzt? And the conjugated verb is hat. That goes all the way to the end. Hat. Sie sagt, dass sie in der Disco getanzt hat. Nothing changes in the rest of the sentence. The only thing we are doing is grabbing the conjugated verb and stick it at the end of the sentence. Let's do one more. Er hat viel gelernt. He has learned or studied a lot. Er hatte schlechte Noten, obwohl he had bad grades, even though he studied a lot. It happens sometimes, you know, if, if it's a difficult concept. So, let's put that original sentence into the subordinating clause. Obwohl er viel gelernt, grab the heart and stick it at the end. Obwohl er viel gelernt hat. All right. It's not hard, it's just that you have to remember the rule. That's all there is to it. Okay. Now, I gave you three sentences here in English, and I'd like you to tell me what they sound like in German. Okay. He telephoned Robert. So we know the perfect tense is a compound tense. It has haben plus a past participle, right? So, you, do, Conjugated verb of haben is has, right? And in German, if you telephone somebody, we use a mit. Mit, Robert, and then the past participle, right? Telefoniert. That's what it is. And remember, that's an Iren verb, so it does not get a GE prefix. Du hast. Mit Robert telefoniert. He, er, he took a, a bath today. Okay. Now, to take a bath is Baden. All right. Er, remember, haben, conjugate haben. Er hat heute Baden, GE prefix, Bad, and then ET ending. Er hat heute gebadet. 
And the third one he uses a subordinating conjunction, even though. So he played tennis even though it rained. Let's see how that sounds. He has played tennis. Er hat tennis spielen becomes gespielt. Remember, gespielt. Conjunction is obwohl. Es. To rain is regnen. It's a regular verb. Wohl es geregnet hat. And the conjugated verb haben, the form of haben, goes to the end of the phrase. There we go. If you did that like I did, then you understood the concept. If not, just go over and review and practice, and it shouldn't be too complicated.